Most people talk whatever. We talk whatever. Yeah, yeah. What you drawing? A self portrait. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't really draw self portraits that much. Well, this is my first time doing a self portrait though. Um, can I describe what I'm drawing now? It's just me posing like a celebrity. I'm wearing a gown, a Sherry Hill gown. And I'm wearing a necklace, and my hair is short. Well, your hair is short right now. My hair's still shorter though. Your hair is always shorter than mine. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, what do we talk about today? Uh, we're talking about how to get inspiration, maybe? It's just all about inspiration in this episode. Yay! Because that's very difficult to find. Well, not so difficult as in my case, though, because I get inspiration whenever I come across something. Whenever I draw, it's just spontaneous in my head. Just whatever I'm thinking, hey, why don't I draw that? So I just draw, draw. Especially when I'm bored, you know? Or maybe when you're watching TV and YouTube mm. and something. Yeah. Especially the memes. <laughs> <laughs> the memes? Well, I don't really draw memes, but why not? I used to draw memes, though. You know, back then, I used to make comics, web comics. On, ah, yeah. same here. On onechak.com, you know, the copycat of 9gag. It's the Indonesian version of 9gag. Yeah, but no, hmm. It's dead. No, it's not dead. It's still there, but... It's still alive. It's still alive, but it's just... But know, it's barely breathing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still there, but there's just a lot of memes that are cringe-worthy, though. I don't go there anymore. One check should get, <laughs> one check should get a meme filter. <laughs> like if it's too cringy, then it's gonna be out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Where do we get there now? <laughs> I'm so sorry, we're just full of memes today. Uh, you're the one that told me. <laughs> it's Sunday, it's full of memes. Fridays are better than Sundays, because Sundays are suicide days. <laughs> but today is Sunday. <laughs> oh my god, no. Let's not go there, okay? okay. Let's not talk about suicide or, oh, I don't know. Thanks a lot, 21 Pilots. <laughs> <laughs> My god, 21 Pilots, now we're going to give a shout out to you. Hi 21 Pilots, please come to Jakarta, please. Please, please, we need you guys. Please, come here already. Like, You've got like a swarm of fans here. Yeah, you can make a lot of money here if that's what you're searching for. <laughs> we're not asking them to come work here. <laughs> they have their own tour. <laughs> we can give you lots of money, come on. Indonesian people are like, how many are there? More than thousands, maybe millions? Huh? Millions, of course! Oh my god, it's hundred millions! Oh my god, come on, just come here! <laughs> just go to Bali, Jakarta, whatever! Come on! So, Rara, how do you get inspiration? To the internet. <laughs> okay, please don't tell me memes, please! I'm not gonna say memes. Okay. I'm just gonna say TV shows and bands, you know, music in general. Because back in the DeviantArt days, that's where my inspiration comes from. Like, listening to songs from these bands, so I made band-related comics and make jokes about them. But yeah, nowadays, I don't do that anymore. I just... Oh, why? Why didn't you do that anymore? Come on. I don't really keep up with the latest bands, I just listen to any song that I like listening to. Uh, I see now. Okay then. But back then you were mostly talking about bands that are emo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were we were both band geeks back then, like yeah. in the sense of liking emo and alternative rock bands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then you also make fun of celebrities like pop stars like Madonna. Oh uh, yeah, Madonna was like fun of Madonna at all. Who is it? I remember you made a comic about Britney Spears or Madonna. I don't know. Uh, it, it was Madonna and mm -hmm. I think Beyonce or Rihanna. Probably, probably Madonna and Rihanna. Oh, I, I kind of yeah, forgot. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both big back then, right? Yeah, I kind of like them now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's kind of weird because back then, when I listened to uh, Rihanna's song Umbrella, it's just like, what the fuck is this song? What? It's not. It's not catchy. Come on, people. Why do you listen to this song? Or no. Well, I still don't find that song quite catchy, but I find her other songs are catchy, actually, but it just don't go to the radio. It's weird. You know, why do people listen to something that is kind of repetitive? Because that's what the pop industry is. Ah, okay. I see now. Well, they're actually getting influence and inspiration from other musicians. Mm -hmm, just like Lady Gaga from Madonna, right? <laughs> yeah, everything comes like even, all... Even Madonna is irritated, you know? She's like... Uh, what you say? Reductive? I don't know what's that word though. Repetitive. No, no, it's reductive. When she was asked in an interview, when she was asked about Lady Gaga, what do you think about Lady Gaga? And then she said, reductive. What's that? Is that good? And she told the interviewee, look it up. Look it up on the internet. Come on. <laughs> But yeah, nowadays the drama is over. Now Lady Gaga, yeah. Katy Perry, and Madonna yeah. are teaming up and going a squad. 
Not really, because Lady Gaga is actually kind of against Katy Perry because Katy Perry is copying her. Not anymore. Last time, there was a recent pic posted by Katy Perry, about three of them posing together and saying that the drama is over. Some people speculated that they're gonna make a music video together someday. And I'm like, yes, queens, I can't wait for them to make a music video together. Okay, I but yeah, like you said, Gaga gained influence from Madonna and Katy got influence from Gaga and so forth. That That's inspiration. I see that's how they get inspired from other artists. Is, but they don't admit it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. There's a fine line between inspiration and copying. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's kind of good to get inspired and then you copy them, then mix it up to match your own personality. Well, that's good inspiration. I mean, that's a good kind of inspiring. It's called orientation. For me, I don't see there's such thing as originality. Like, there's no both form of originality because everyone copies, you know? Just like how you like to copy other artists. Yeah, you can't be 100% original. There yeah. has to be influence from other artists. Yes, come on, your mind is not suddenly come up with an original idea. When your brain scans something and then it goes to your memory and then you see, oh, wait, why don't I make this? And then you just kind of create something new, touch it up a little bit, become different from the original. It's just like that. That's how I see it. Imitation is innovation. Yeah, imitation is innovation because whenever I draw, it always comes from the mind. But from the mind, it comes from a memory that I've seen this picture before. I kind of remember this artist. I forget her name, but I saw a line sticker. Do you have line stickers? Yeah, I yeah, have line. I yeah. checked out the stickers. Yeah, you're selling them, right? Purpalumper. Go check it out. It's P-U-R-P-L-E-L-E-M-P-E-R. Purpalumper. Go search for it. Purpalumper and Sin Cakes, right? Yeah, Adventures of the Sin Cakes. Yes. Just, just search Sin Cakes. Yeah. They've also got a webcomic. It's on Tapastic. I'll put a link down there if y'all want to read it. Yep. And also, I've seen this um, sticker called the Big City Girl. I'm actually kind of inspired by how she drew it. I use the same tool, like this drawing pen. I rarely use watercolor. <laughs> I always use ink pen. I don't know. It's just uh, very practical to bring. So I just use this tool. And then I see this Big City Girl sticker. Oh my god, that's so cool. And I just doodle uh, kind of similar pictures. You drew her. a similar style with hers. Yeah. and then But you make your own self. <laughs> portraits. Yep. And this is what I'm drawing right now. Well, it's not exactly her style. But I wonder what style is this. But I've seen it before. Well, you can just add it to your gallery. But mm-hmm. just don't sell it as line stickers. Or else. <laughs> she's gonna sue you <laughs> of course not if you see my instagram I actually post them but it's only on instagram story not on the gallery so it's gone forever no it's, it's not gone forever but oh yeah speaking of which <laughs> instagram stories it's a snapchat copycat am i yeah. right yeah you know i heard that facebook is actually copying snapchat <laughs> it's kind of crazy you know everyone's copying other apps it's yeah crazy. but when it comes to social networks and social websites it's called innovation i mean yep. you gotta be like one step closer to your competitors to you know i also you. seen this article uh, the snapchat founder has a wife She's actually an actress, but somehow I forgot her name. This is so weird. Okay, she told Facebook, like, why are you copying my husband's idea? It's not husband's. Is it wife? Oh my god, oh my god. Oh wait, it's Miranda Kerr, and she's not his wife. <laughs> Apparently, they're engaged last year, though. Okay, so she is his fiance. Mm-hmm. When it comes to social media, right? They copy each other's features just to completely eliminate their the other. They actually want to turn down the other competitors. Right? Yeah, to actually eliminate the competitors and take all the users for themselves. That's what Instagram did. You know, Snapchat was so big back then, right? I use it, but then it's because of the memory space they use. It's just kind of massive. Same. So I just uninstalled it. I deleted Snapchat because of the same reason, lol. And then suddenly Instagram came up with this feature. Why not? Because people like Snapchat because their photos yeah, just disappear. They can, yeah, they can also add filters to it, right? Like, you know that dog filter? <laughs> Oh yeah, that, that ugly dog yeah. filter, I really hate it. <laughs> yeah, we said that one time, oh my god. No, I already uninstalled it, and so it's like, oh, this is not working for me. I mean, Snapchat, I think, started the whole disappearing photos thing, mm-hmm. like only 24-hour yeah. photos, and then Instagram suddenly wants to do that because yeah. people are yeah. suddenly into all these vanishing photo trends and stuff. Yeah, also, I think people use this kind of thing to use the live feature. They can see things live, not from the past. Like, on Instagram, you usually post pictures that are already taken before but when you go to instagram story people see what's actually happening right now that's what they're actually seeking you know they want it to be more live more recent not pictures from the past like the throwback thursday thing you know so i think that's what people are wanting from this feature and also that also came from me too also i want to use that <laughs> I'm also glad that Instagram did this though because I don't have to use Snapchat anymore. (laughs) 
See, that's the thing. Snapchat's targeting her, mm-hmm. and Instagram is also targeting her for different purposes. And mm-hmm. then she likes Snapchat because of something, and Instagram is like greedy. Mm-hmm. They want to target her completely and like get rid of Snapchat altogether. So they copy Snapchat so she doesn't have to use Snapchat anymore. Yeah. Ah, oh, dang it. Instagram is probably not greedy in reality. Sorry, Instagram. <laughs> But not sorry because you've got a hundred thousand million bajillion users, <laughs> which kind of makes me want to use other Instagram clones instead. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess Snapchat is also doing more innovation. Like Instagram doesn't have um, this filter thing, the dog filter thing, but Snapchat still has it. So in that area, Snapchat still wins. Well, pretty sure there are loads of other apps with face filters like Snow Camera, but they're not necessarily Snapchat alternatives. Okay, and now we're talking about technology. <laughs> No, we're just talking about social apps and yeah. Let's, let's just go back to inspiration. Okay. So, can you tell us more about your divine art days? How do you get inspired? Ah, uh, let's see. Besides song lyrics, besides TV and the internet and mm-hmm. live happenings, uh, I don't really know. <laughs> okay. Well, what about pictures from the internet? Yeah, I look at other people's artworks. I follow comic artists, and sometimes if I like their style, I say that I can make my version of it. I just try and making my own versions of those. I see them. If they're making self portraits, I'll just make one with me in it instead. <laughs> it's not just now that I don't draw self portraits that much, right? Yep. I draw doodles of myself on my own, but that's different. <laughs> Back then, my self esteem is lower than right now, and with self portraits, other artists show confidence with themselves. And right. when I make my own versions of their self portraits, I sort of channel my confidence too, just like them, but with myself. All like right. own that. Do you get any flames from them? <laughs> Do they know that you're copying them? Back in 2007, they do because I blatantly post that on DeviantArt because I don't have any idea about alternative social yeah. networks. DeviantArt alternatives. So they just found out and I really don't give credit. And then they just scolded me for it. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, just give me the link. I pretended to act chill. In fact, I was like really pissed because I got caught. <laughs> <laughs> like from then on, 2008 onwards, when I got in college, I started giving credit where credit is due. I still copy them and I still post it in deviant art but then i credit them i link their artworks back well now thanks to the brightness of social media and its alternatives i delved into the world and i uploaded my copied stuff not in deviant art anymore not in my art block anymore i only post original stuff now ah i see now <laughs> then where do you post this though where do you post your copied no one will know All right then, I'll keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Artists, when they copy, they want to make their own version of something, but. It's a different case when someone's truly inspired or when they're just plain copying, but they use the word inspired as an excuse. I think I've seen that before. Are you into makeup, right? Uh, not really. I don't really wear makeup. You're more of a makeup yeah. expert than me. Because there's this thing, there's this controversy from Kylie Jenner Cosmetics. She posted this picture. Maybe she found it somewhere on the internet or Instagram. But actually belongs to this makeup artist called Fada Haggerty. It's Fada M-U-A. That's her Instagram username. Fada Haggerty? Uh, just look it up. Because she posted that case where Kylie Jenner posted that picture without giving her proper credits. That's plagiarism, yo. It's yeah. bad. I don't know if that's plagiarism, but she posted that picture. And then when Flada pointed that out, she edited the, the picture and said, Check out this makeup artist called Flada Haggerty. It's like she just credited this woman when she was found out. Yeah. <laughs> that's a chicken move. Like I used to do that when I was copying back in DeviantArt. <laughs> but then I learned to give credit to people. Yeah, that's the thing. If you're inspired by someone, just give credit to them. It's their work. Yeah. They deserve to know that they're the one who come up with it first. Yeah, they also create this controversy about Flada's fans actually fans are gonna be the one who's battling yeah <laughs> like y'all both are just gonna be there like queens on top controlling y'all fans like <laughs> yeah. it's kind of funny people are actually suspecting that Kylie Jenner is creating these shades of lipstick that her ideas are not original like she copied from the marketing concept from- she is a businesswoman Yeah. Entrepreneurs. Well, it's business though. They don't really care about arts, I think. <laughs> They only care about the moolah. They only care about money. Come on. Kylie herself might care about the art and customer attraction, but her team probably don't as much. Hmm. It's all about the money, money, money. <laughs> money, money, money. It's all about the robbers. Forget about the past. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so when it comes to blogging or drawing, the difference between inspiration and copying is inspiration is like taking bits and parts of the essence while copying just takes the whole skeleton or the whole cake. But there is such a thing called good copying and bad copying and inspiration is part of copying, but it's not copying, not necessarily copying.
But yeah, I have something to talk about deviant art beginners. Like the ones that use bases and trace other people. I get it. Back then I'm a copycat, but I never trace people's artworks. Tracing is just plain wrong. It's just, oh come on, it's frustrating. It's kind of insulting. I mean, remember you draw and you put a book below the paper just to get a good texture on the pen? And then people say you're copying. Are you tracing that? Oh my god, that's so irritating and that's this is the worst insult ever to every artist, okay? Never ask any artist if you trace, okay? okay. <laughs> Like tracing was okay for yeah. beginners, for okay. for little kids who just learn how to draw. Yeah, but that's why it's an insult. But not when you're gonna post your artworks online. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. Well, it is embarrassing. That's why tracers they don't want to get caught. Of course. Except yeah. for when your tracer from Overwatch, yeah, yeah. Well, she doesn't get caught anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to tracer for coming out and representing the LGBT community in game characters. Mm -hmm. Overwatch is awesome. They have a lot of diverse characters, and yeah, hopefully they're gonna get more diverse characters. I hope they actually have a character that wears a uh, hijab. Yeah, I mean, Farah is from Egypt. Farah and her mom Anna, they don't wear hijab though. Oh, okay. They just have like Egyptian tattoos. Oh, alright then. I don't know if they're religious or not. <laughs> Somehow I'll just uh, hope for any characters. Ow. <laughs> I just hit my head on the wall. News flash, he just hit her head on the wall. <laughs> I just hope that there are more characters represent a person like me because there are a lot of people like me wearing the hijab. I just wish that there are characters that also wear the hijab because it's just give a lot of meaning to me. It just means that I exist. There are a lot of people that exist like me. I just want to say that I hope there are a lot more Muslim characters. Or there's a lot of Muslim characters starting to. I mean, look mm -hmm. at Tumblr. They have like OCs with hijabs on them. Yay, yes, go for it. <laughs> But they don't necessarily wear the hijab, but then the hijab is kind of identical. Yeah, the hijab is identical. But to be honest, I myself don't really throw a lot of people with hijab on them though. It's kind of weird, right? Yeah. Oh my god, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Besides TV and music and mm -hmm. stuff, do you get inspiration from other yeah, artists? I do. I already said it. I actually get inspiration from this sign sticker creator. But besides that, I also get inspirations from things around me, the people that I know. Sometimes draw them out of my. Yes, I'm like, hey, I want to draw him. So I just draw him. Just look at his face. Yeah, you just draw wh whoever you feel like drawing. Yeah, there's no deep meaning to it though. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I also do those um, patterns. Actually, I never did this before. Pattern drawing is actually yeah. therapeutic. It's very therapeutic because I kind of like drawing repetitive images. Like yeah. It's been a while since I did. Yeah, and also, oh wow, it actually looks good. So I'm going to try that again. Yeah, that's the main advantage of... If you're working in an office, you're yeah. bound to meet all these people, yeah. and then, then there's gonna be some misadventures and mishaps happening. Yeah. Especially if you have like more than mm. one circle of friends. Yeah. You tend to take the most notable moment in your outing or something. You're gonna yeah. draw it, you're gonna post it on the internet, and then people are just gonna be like, oh, that happened to me once. And also, besides that, whenever I listen to music, I always listen to the lyrics, what they're trying to say, because I don't know, I'm such a lyrical person. A lot of people yeah. are inspired by song lyrics. Yeah. Well, Whenever I listen to something on Spotify, whenever I'm bored, then I feel like the song gives me the mood to draw. And I just draw it according to the song lyrics they sang or the mood they're singing. Music and art is related and yeah. so is inspiration and relatability. Inspiration is relatability. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you can make a quote from that though. <laughs> Hashtag inspiration is relatability. Tweet it to us. At Kamikura. K-M-I-Q-U-R-R-A Yes And at Ratryoshka It's just like Matryoshka with an R <laughs> Just two to us, okay? And maybe you can also add some doodles or your artwork that you're inspired by Yeah, show yeah. us your artworks Yeah, just show us your artworks on Facebook, on Instagram Stay us And maybe we can just do a collaboration together Yay, we can do collaboration I wish we could because we're so far away, you know My friends are so far away <laughs> That's what art communities are for. I mean, they're like yeah. gathering artists from all over the world and we can do collaborations. When though? What's the upcoming holiday this year? Uh, oh wait, I, don't know. I think I remember. It was Good Friday. It's on April. I think it's the first or the second week of April. <laughs> Easter? Yeah, Easter, yeah. Yeah, we don't celebrate Easter though, but yay, but Easter is a holiday. And I don't go to work, yay! <laughs> yeah, maybe we can go online and like live stream. <laughs> oh, I wish my tablet is working though. But then we don't have live stream apps. I think they have this on Google though. What, Google Hangouts? 
No, Google Docs. I don't know. Oh, Google Docs. I wonder if there's actually an app for like, Canvas, and then we just draw. No, live, live Canvas. Yeah, live Canvas. I think that I've been there once. Mm-hmm. I drew Razia Shadow fan art. If you guys don't know Razia Shadow, it's that musical from the band Forgive Durden. The band that's run by <laughs> only one guy, Thomas Dutton. It used to be several people, but then Thomas Dutton is the one who's remaining and Forgive Durden. I see. I just heard it now. But I've seen you making Razia Shadow fan art. I also didn't know that it's actually from a band. I thought it was a show. It actually features a lot of musicians and band oh, members. See. front people okay you know what I sometimes wonder how do art workers work under pressure they have this deadline oh uh, you mean graphic designers and illustrators yep they do have to find inspiration right How do they get those inspiration in such a short time sad thing is companies they only care about the money well not the companies I work in but usually companies in general if they hire graphic designers they want them to like do this finish this task on time they don't understand how much time we need to get inspiration how much effort we can't just get it instantly all that right because you need to do research to design right to get the perfect image that you want that's what you've been working right and when we're out of inspiration we just do what any other artists do break down and cry and get seizures (laughs) and this is why people think that art people are unstable (laughs) because we just need inspiration to do our work and (laughs) we can't finish our work on time it's kind of sad how how do you work like that it's frustrating and the creative industry is way different from the technical industry or any other industry but it's just how we work Mm -hmm. like inspiration can't be forced this is what companies need to know that's what most people need to know because people tend to find graphic designers more relaxed more flexible hours of working but it's actually flexible hours yeah even when we get home we still finish our work on photoshop and stuff yeah but even if we have to force ourselves to get inspiration i don't know maybe the best way to do it is just exercise Exercise like you, you don't have to exercise you just like jog around the house for a few minutes mm-hmm. and exercise actually helps your mood it fills you up with ideas somehow okay so that's one way but how about people that actually don't have the time to exercise <laughs> watch more youtube videos i guess <laughs> oh my god no but if you watch youtube videos if you browse things on the internet if you google or give them <laughs> okay <laughs> you search for stuff that are out of your field all right search for new things dip okay. into other people's pools once in a while yeah or you just copy <laughs> yeah copying works dude but don't take the whole skeleton just take every bits and parts of the essence mm-hmm. don't take the whole skeleton okay all right all right <laughs> okay so that's one way to look at it but do other graphic designers find it differently especially from people who are more experienced like they work for more than 10 years or five years i wonder how they do it i think we should invite somebody here invite someone who's actually a head graphic designer yeah i'm a junior graphic designer mm-hmm. and a comic artist <laughs> or maybe uh, when you post this i think we should ask questions or anyone who has graphic designer can you like share your thoughts how do you get inspiration in such a very short time under pressure in such pressure that uh, it stresses you out well if you work full time then mm-hmm. i guess the reasonable reason is uh, the office environment it has to be inspiration inducing that's what creative industries creative industry offices are made to look there's like game rooms and tv mm-hmm. rooms lounges so they can sleep and play games and mm-hmm. do whatever they want to so make themselves relax and exercise so they're gonna get ideas for their next project mm, I see alright I went to Rhythm and Hughes back in Malaysia it was paradise it's not like any other office oh I see and then, and then I really want to work in a place like that now that I'm back in Indonesia I think more places are like that right now in Indonesia it seems the startup explosion <laughs> say startup explosion because there are a lot of startup companies right now startup explosions <laughs> yeah yeah booms <laughs> <laughs> And then mostly are millennials who are working on the startup companies and also the Z generation in their new work. Am I saying this right? <laughs> well, I thought the Z generation is being born right now. They're babies. Oh. Oh, okay. I don't uh, know, actually. <laughs> well, I think it's the Y generation. Why do people label us? I mean, we just want to grow up and yeah. live our lives. Okay. <laughs> so that's the only question that I want to ask. How do you get inspiration in such a pressure? How do you get it in such a short time? Because I kind of want that too. <laughs> Because not every day, not every time that I actually draw, but I want to know the techniques to get inspiration. Besides from just seeing a movie or just come across something, you know. How do you force yourself to get inspiration? That's, that's I have to think about that. Yeah. <laughs>
So guys, that's all the time we have for today. But before we go, we're gonna give some shoutouts. First to Achi. Thank you for listening to us. Hey Achi, I wanna meet you. Yeah, let's just come to our office, Sarah. Right? Alright then. What's your name though? Astrid. Astrid Damayanti. Okay, uh. Astrid Damayanti on Instagram. And then, uh, please update your vlogs, please, because I do wanna see them. What you're going to do next. <laughs> Man, I really gotta start watching her vlogs. I wanna check out your YouTube channel. Alright then. Uh, shout out to Angita. I just wanna say thanks for, uh, listening to the first episode of What Ifs. And for stalking our deviant art since back in the days. Check out her Instagram. That's Sukechihara. Mm -hmm. It's like S U K E T C H I I Hara. Go follow her for all her cute doodles. Okay. Especially if you're into Star Wars and Luna C. You know that Japanese band? Anyway, she's into a lot of different awesome fandoms. Alright. <laughs> and what else do we give shout outs to? Uh, uh, what about Short Ear though? Oh yeah, Short Ear! I'm just going to give shout out to Short Ear and their team. News in 60 words. <laughs> Yay! What else? Uh, I guess that's it. No, I think there should be more people. Come on, we only mentioned three people. Isn't three the default? Oh, Budi Amin. Okay. Also, shout out to Budi Amin, Masming. Hello, Masming. Jangan manggil gue somong lagi ya. <laughs> Thanks for listening to our podcast. Yeah, thank you. And don't forget to listen to this as well, okay? <laughs> we give the shout out especially for you. Yes. <laughs>